Hey folks, this is Riker with an update on the Overwatch Sombra Reveal ARG. November 1st came and some crazy stuff happened. New puzzles to solve, new messages to decode, more progression in the story of Sombra and Lumerico. But first, here's the too long didn't watch version. Sombra has not yet released on PTR or live, nor has she been revealed. However, we solved some more clues that gave a pretty spectacular end to the Dorado ARG story arc, and seems to have opened up a new story arc for possibly a new ARG on Volskaya. That's a too long didn't watch, now let's dive into the nitty gritty. Last time we left off, we had a terminal on the Lumerico site that was offline. Today, it was brought back online and we had access to it. So the first thing you want to do when you get there is type help to get a list of commands. And right away, one command that stands out is override. So we type in override, and what do we get? We're prompted for a response to favorite movie. So how the hell are we supposed to know what the answer to that is, right? Well, if you're an Overwatch player, then you'll know that there's a map called Hollywood that has a lot of movie posters on it. And through trial and error, you eventually stumble on this poster here, Some Like It But, a parody of the movie Some Like It Hot, and you insert that, and that is the correct answer. Next, you're prompted for favorite cookie flavor. Okay, so there's no cookie factory map, so how are we gonna answer this? Well, remember all those emails that we went over in our last Sombra video that seemed to mostly just be fluff and flavor? No, the answer is not the espresso machine. Now, you have to factor in that this terminal is normally only accessed by the chief of security. So the answers here, in order to gain override access, probably have to do with her. So going through her emails, we find one that we mentioned in the past video where one of the employees is saying that his kid is selling cookies. And the security chief replied to him saying that yes, she would take a box. And what she said exactly was, Yo me llevo una caja de las nuevas sabor delicias. The start of that sentence, yo me llevo, means I will take. Una caja means a box. De las means of the. And then we're left with the name of the type of cookie that she likes. So we insert that, Nueva Sabor Delicias. Next, we're prompted for a secret. Now this one stumped the game detectives for a while. And to find the answer to this, we actually had to dig a little deeper within the terminal itself. So looking at those commands again, about is one of the commands that you can enter. Just output some information about the terminal. And another command is GREP. Now GREP or grep was initially designed as a command line for Unix systems. And it derives from the command g slash re slash p, or g for globally, search re regular expression, and p print. And as the explanation here says, grep lets you search a certain output by a certain string. In other words, you can search something for something. It's basically control f. Now it turns out there was actually a clue in one of the emails we got, or I should say another clue, aside from the cookie one. This was a more recent email, and it seems like it was corrupted. As you can see, there's a lot of gibberish text here, but highlighted in purple is a certain string of characters. Slash T-E-R slash. So eventually, the game detectives managed to figure out to search the about file for T-E-R. And the command to do that would be about pipe grep T-E-R. And when you do that, you get this as a result. In other words, you get output all the lines that have TER in them. In this case, it's always for terminal. But when you search it this way, you get some more purple highlighted text. Open anything 1.1.0. You try to put that in as a secret, it accepts it and gives you an OK in green. So it seems like now we're in the override command mode. We type help again to see if we've unlocked any additional commands, and in fact we have. We've unlocked the command ls, which will give us a list of files on the server. We've unlocked cat, which allows us to read a file. And we've unlocked exec, which allows us to run a file. So right away, the first thing you want to do is try out the ls command to see what files we're working with. And we see two files, one HTML file, and one that just says payload with no file extension. So we try to execute the payload, and then it asks us for an activation code. Well. What could the activation code be? And after a lot of trial and error, someone thought to try putting the tracer trail in there. 
Remember that loose end from all the way back in August that was never solved? Well, that string of text is put in as the activation code, and it's accepted. Now we see some familiar Sombra text. Sombra Protocol version 2.2 is initiated, and we finally find out what the Sombra Protocol is. In that last line, it says that it is overcharging the nuclear power plant in Dorado. At this point, other stuff starts happening on the site. Remember those gauges that we previously said were rendered client-side and were thus useless? Well, at the start of all this today, they were all set to zero. The energy levels were all set to zero, presumably because of the power failure of the power plant. Now that we activated Sombra Protocol, those gauges start climbing, the energy levels start climbing, and we're now in the midst of yet another count-up. Except this one seemed like it would only last maybe an hour or two. Also at the top right, previously in the day, we had the Sombra Skull followed by a zero, but that number started to count up. Now what happens when you overcharge a nuclear power plant? A nuclear meltdown. So over the next hour or two, the gauges are creeping their way up towards 100, and everyone's wondering what's gonna happen when that happens. Meanwhile, amidst all this, around the same time that the tracer trail was found to be the activation code, another command was found to work, and this was actually running the cat command on the HTML file. An HTML file is typically a website that's going to have, you know, information in the file, so reading it seems to make perfect sense. Now, when you run that command, you get this as a result. In ASCII art, a key with a bunch of gibberish text in it that seems like an encoded message. So if you capture all that text and strip out the spaces, in other words, un ascii it. Oh my god, I just realized they gave us an ASCII key. So when you strip out all the spacing, you realize that this is a pattern that repeats itself, and this is the message, without all the additional repetitions. A string of text that, if you look at it, seems like it could just be another letter substitution cipher. A previous clue, which we covered in a previous video, was solved with one of these simple substitution ciphers. It was specifically a Caesar cipher, or possibly also called a rotational cipher, Regardless, Caesar Cipher is probably the more common name, and basically, let's say in a Caesar Cipher where you shift letters over by two, it can be whatever, whatever number you want it to be, A would become C, B would become D, etc, etc. Every letter is, sh is shifted two places to the right, or left, whatever direction you choose. But it seemed like a simple Caesar Cipher wouldn't solve this. So instead, what was attempted was an affine cipher. This is a more complex letter substitution cipher that follows this mathematical formula that, don't worry, we'll explain. So basically, what these symbols mean is you take a letter, in this case it's represented by the X, but you take any letter and then you represent it as a number between 0 and 25, with 0 being A, 1 being B, and Z being 25. Then you multiply that number by a specific number, which we'll call A in this formula. You're going to get a new total. You take that total and you add another specific number to it. We'll call that number B. Then with that new total, you keep subtracting the number 26. That's what mod 26 means. You keep subtracting the number 26 until you arrive at a number that is equal to or less than 25. So a number between 0 and 25. 26 in this case is chosen because there are 26 letters in the English alphabet. Now lastly, you take that final number that you arrive at between 0 and 25 and translate that back into a letter. So let's give you guys an example here. Let's say that in our formula, our A is the number 5 and our B is the number 8. So our formula would look like this. Now let's take the letter N. That's the letter that we want to cipher. We're going to represent that letter by the number 13. We then multiply it by our A, which is 5, and add our B, which is 8, to arrive at 73. Because that number is higher than 26, we subtract 26 from that total. Our new number is 47, which is still higher than 26, so we do it again. And now we get 21. We translate that back into a letter, and we get the letter V. So if you were encrypting a message, you would do that with every single letter. And to decrypt it, it's just a matter of running the math in reverse. So the real trouble here is figuring out what the A and the B are. Thankfully, Sombra is very predictable and loves the number 23. So we plug in 23 for our A and our B, and we uh, put our message into this handy website that'll run the math for us so that we don't have to do it tediously by ourselves. And the message we get here is 
Some keys are shaped as locks. Dot index. There didn't seem to be a corresponding web page to that, so it's not super clear why there was the dot index, but it seems like this was intended as a clue. Because we found no further use for this, so it seems that this was meant to help us figure out to use the tracer trail as the activation code. You see, we always thought that the tracer trail was a puzzle to solve. We thought it was a lock that we had to unlock. That we needed a key for that lock, for the tracer trail. But it turned out that the tracer trail was in fact a key to open a different lock. Thus, some keys are shaped like locks. I must say it does seem odd that this tracer trail from months ago was all along just intended to be a key to the end of this ARG, but a part of me wants to believe that maybe we dropped the ball, we were never able to solve the tracer trail, and the moment passed, whatever it would have solved was just long defunct at this point, so Blizzard's like, shit, we gotta find some way to just throw it in. They're gonna keep asking about the tracer trail, just, just shove it in anywhere. But who knows. So moving on, the gauges are counting up to 100%. Meanwhile, new emails and news posts have been appearing, a lot of them this same day, but some of them leading up from the posting of our last video. And from these messages, we're getting a greater idea of the story that's unfolding. The Lumerico power plant has been hit with power outages. Lumerico is trying to do damage control with respect to PR. The people of Mexico are starting open protests against Lumerico after Sombra aired the CEO's dirty laundry. Los Muertos sprayed graffiti all over Lumerico headquarters. And we even see security camera footage of Trash Mouse and Street Pig breaking into the Dorado bank vault. This image is shared amongst uh, Lumerico security personnel. And that last bit is what really helps us narrow down the timeline. We know in the Dorado map, that the bank was just recently broken into. No repairs have been made, nothing even temporary has been put up to block the big hole in the bank. So there was speculation that the events in this ARG might have been happening in the past, but this solidifies that it is now, it is the present within the game and the ARG. So finally, those gauges, the energy levels or whatever, hit 100% or 100 degrees or whatever. They hit the red, the bad, they get to bad. And at that point, the page just starts glitching out. It looks as though it's being hacked, I guess. I mean, that's not what real hacking looks like, but what movie hacking looks like. It was really cool. There was an explosive moment when we saw this happen. And apart from that, a skull appears in the top left corner of the site. You'll also notice that the Lumerico logo has flipped upside down. Now, this isn't the typical Sombra skull that we're accustomed to, However, it is still a Dia de los Muertos skull. And when you click on it, you get this message in Spanish. Good job, friends. I could not have done this without your help. I got what I need for my next hit. You'll love it. Expect to hear from me in the coming days. I'll send you something as a thank you. Hopefully you can get it. Das Vidanya, friends. Now, Das Vidanya is Russian, not Spanish, and it means goodbye. So it certainly seemed odd that Sombra, out of nowhere, throws us this Russian word. But it did give us a hit to another Russian connection. The Volskaya Industries map. Now we'd seen Sombra Protocol appear on the terminals there a few weeks ago. Could this be Sombra's next target? Well, if you inspect the source code of this page, you see something that stands out. This word, misdirection. And you go to lumerico.mx slash misdirection, and it turns out to be a webpage. Sombra's familiar style here, and what it says is diverting data from the Lumerico ziggurat to the objective, cracking the objective's password, access granted to the directory of VolskayaIndustries.com. And she signs off with a boop and a winky face, because apparently now she's both Bastion and Diva combined. Or would that be Lucio? Beep boop. So we go to VolskayaIndustries.com, and this is what we see. Translated from Russian, it says exceeding the load on the server, maintenance in progress. Meanwhile, in game, a Dia de los Muertos skull spray was found. And it's that same Sombra skull, the new one, that appeared when all this came to an end. Presumably, this is Sombra's gift to us. This spray is in game. There seemed to be no update, or at least we didn't notice an update go through. So at some point, I didn't mention this in a past video, but at some point it seemed like there were additional files added to the game, or rather, items. So, 
you could do something sometimes to see the number of items, of total items, let's say in the shop or that you can acquire for all the characters combined. And it seemed that that number increased randomly at some point. So it was speculated that those were all of Sombra's files that have been put into the game, but hidden, and would be made available later. So potentially, this is one of those. And that's where we are, folks. Nothing yet has been found on the Volskaya website. There's no leads, no clues, no puzzles to solve yet. Again, Sombra said, wait a few days. Sounds like BlizzCon to me. And this seems to be the conclusion of the Dorado arc. In fact, if you go to the Lumerica website, there's a new news post titled, The King is Dead. And basically, it's inferred from the message here and some other messages that he was kidnapped by Sombra or her goons, Los Muertos, whatever, and that he will apparently be brought to justice. So really, this does seem like the end of this story and a teaser at a new one to come. The Volsky arc. And again, if you look at the artwork that was leaked just a day or two ago, it seems to be Sombra standing on one of those giant mecha robots, Gundam suits, whatever, on Volskaya Industries. At this one, it seems unlikely that we'll get another ARG update until BlizzCon, but it does seem like the ARG will continue, which seems odd to some people, because we thought that it would end with Sombra being released. So could this mean that Sombra won't actually be revealed and released at BlizzCon? Possibly, yes, but I'm starting to get the impression that Blizzard enjoys doing these ARGs and may continue them even after Sombra is released. Maybe the ARG will continue to be used to reveal new heroes or deliver information or story. I certainly hope it keeps going. It's been a lot of fun. Yes, it's been a little rocky here and there, but hopefully Blizzard has learned from this, learned what not to do. But there certainly were some really big wins in this ARG on Blizzard's part, some really exciting moments. And I do look forward to continuing it with Volskaya. Now, I gotta say that I was kind of expecting the Sombra reveal to be saved for BlizzCon, so it's, I'm not completely surprised that, that this hasn't happened earlier, sooner. But I was hoping for maybe a, at least a better, like, a teaser to release today at the end of this chapter of the ARG. Uh, still, though, it's been awesome. It's been exciting, and it's gotten me even more hyped for BlizzCon now. Though, I gotta say, if they don't reveal Sombra at BlizzCon... I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna lose my shit. Like, just, just start a riot. It's gonna, like, close my eyes and start flailing my arms wildly and windmilling through the crowd and just... Alright, thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch and Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Now, before I close, I just want to give another big shout-out to the Game Detectives community. Just for being awesome at solving all of these puzzles and clues. It's this think tank, this collective hive mind working together, sharing ideas, and it's, it's just incredible what they've done to solve all these clues. I also want to give a special shout out to community members SRAX and Nemesis for helping to keep me informed on everything that was going on during this maelstrom of ARG hype. So what do you guys think of all this? Are you happy with the conclusion? Are you disappointed? Check out these other videos. Reminder that I'm going to BlizzCon. Follow me on Twitter to stay up to date on all the big announcements that'll be made at BlizzCon. And subscribe to join Rikers Raiders to stay up to date on Sombra News. And it's happened. It's finally happened. The real Sombra leak has happened, folks. Here it is. You're looking at it right here, right now. While this is not 100% confirmed to be real, this looks as real as it gets, and we'll go over why exactly. But right now, folks, this is insane hype. For the ARG to end in a leak, wow. Now we've covered